You want to know how to instantly trigger a YouTube creator in just three words? Leave a comment that says video starts at blank. Video Starts At is a public service announcement from one video viewer to all those who follow, letting them know the timestamp when the most significant content in the video actually begins, so they don't have to sit through six minutes of preamble and context and instructions to smash that like button, and they can instead just figure out how to replace the water pump on their 2002 Honda Civic or whatever the video is about. By any measure, this is a noble act. These commenters are like hikers who leave trail markers so people don't get lost, or the person who writes an out-of-order sign for the toilet that keeps overflowing so you don't have to wade through your own poop logs like he did. Or the person who posts a link to the original 20 second clip of a newsworthy event caught on camera so you don't have to sit through six minutes of Ken and Barbie from your local Fox affiliate transitioning from the previous segment and then talking over the actual video you wanted to see. Make no mistake about it, the people who comment video starts at are heroes doing a service for all of humanity. Every time you've searched for an answer on YouTube and seen that comment, you've clicked on that timestamp and your heart was immediately filled with gratitude for the stranger who was looking out for you. Unfortunately, though, there's one casualty of this noble deed, one victim of collateral damage who has to eat crap because someone dared reveal the secret shortcut. One delicate soul whose righteous indignation at this outrageous act causes them to lash out at the commenter, often deleting the comment or even banning them from the channel entirely. Who is this unfortunate creature? Well, it's people like me. It's the people who make the videos. Creators love to vent about these timestamp commenters. They talk about how rude it is and what they do to deal with people who leave those comments. It's actually a little bit hard to see these reactions from people I respect and admire because I think they're looking at it the wrong way. You see, my background is a little different than most. I come from a product design and marketing background. So human factors, human-centered design, user experience design, service design, design thinking, ergonomics, prototyping, iteration, behavior analysis, A-B testing, product market fit, and all that other stuff is the stuff that's floating around in my head all day. It's the way I think about everything, even YouTube. In professional design, it's super important to be able to analyze results without letting pride and emotions get in the way of your thinking. There's just too much on the line for your ego to be influencing your business decisions. You have to be analytical. As a designer, I treat everything I do as a prototype that can be made better by analyzing user feedback and behavior. If users respond negatively, I don't get offended or tell them they're wrong. Instead, I try to figure out how they got there in the first place so I can resolve that issue in the next version, or in the case of YouTube, in my future videos. You can see this concept in action all the time in the real world with desire paths. A desire path is the new shortcut people create when the route they're supposed to take isn't sufficiently efficient. Su sufficiently efficient. Sufficiently, that's right. They're especially common on university campuses, for example, where people are rushing between classes and they cut across the grass in the most efficient way possible, accidentally carving out actual pathways over time. Typically, colleges get upset that people are destroying their landscaping instead of using their carefully designed sidewalks, so they fight back with announcements and signs that demand people stay off the grass. Then they move on to setting up barriers to try to stop them. None of this ever works, of course, because none of this is solving the actual problem. The smart ones, though, realize they're actually receiving free design advice. These pedestrian violators are unintentionally carving out ideally optimized pathways across the campus. No architect, even the smartest, can design a pathway system as perfectly efficient as a campus full of students who are late for class. And the actual best solution to them tearing up the lawn is simply to pave the trails that they're blazing because those are the right pathways. For video creators, this means if you're repeatedly seeing video starts at comments from these timestamp heroes, your intros probably are too long. It's nothing personal, so it shouldn't be emotional, but it feels that way. That's actually good news, though. You just learned something. They're giving you an edge. When I hear from creators complaining about video starts at comments, there are typically three reasons associated with their feelings. The first is that they have to communicate important context before they can get to the meat of the video. This is a good general principle for a captive audience situation, but YouTube viewers are not a captive audience. When I'm watching a video, YouTube is simultaneously showing me dozens of other videos that the algorithm has calculated to be the most enticing to me. As soon as I'm bored, even just a little bit, I have 20 other places I can immediately go. They're just sitting there calling out to me, click me, click me. 
you just don't have the time to lovingly unwrap the context for your video over the course of multiple minutes. You have to start things right in the middle and keep it going fast. If you absolutely have to give more background information, you can actually do it in chunks throughout the video rather than a lecture up front. This is actually a major YouTube life hack because leaving some open questions keeps people watching longer. It's okay to leave some suspense in there. Don't explain everything up front. People like mysteries. You know who's amazing at intros? Mr. Beast. Watch this intro. I bought this entire island. I have 10 challenges and we have 10 people. And the last one of you to leave this island keeps it. That was seven seconds. He didn't sit there monologuing about the context for this, why he wanted to do it, how he felt about it, how he came up with the idea. He just got down to business. And by 40 seconds into the video, he's done with the first segment and he's on to the second segment. You don't see people commenting video starts at on Mr. Beast videos. At this point, most novice YouTubers are still in the middle of telling people to like and subscribe, which, you know, as long as you're here, you might as well. Mr. Beast is no joke. The episodes are silly, but this guy's got data scientists analyzing viewer behavior to help him perfect his episode structure. There is a lot to learn here. Here's a good rule of thumb. If at any point you're tempted to use a cliche YouTube transition from your intro, like all that being said, let's Let's get into it. Just cut everything before that and your video will probably perform significantly better. Another reason creators give for being upset about video starts at comments is that people miss important details and then ask questions in the comments, which can be annoying. But if you've got people skipping big chunks of your video and missing important details, that's really important viewer feedback that you should take seriously. Don't go on Twitter and get snarky about it. Go find out why they're skipping those sections. Are they too long? Are they unclear? Are they boring? Something's obviously wrong with them and getting upset about it isn't going to make your next video any better. And finally, creators often report feeling like they're being sabotaged when someone posts a video starts at comment. The YouTube algorithm recommends videos in large part based on the average view duration and average percentage viewed, so creators live and die by those numbers. If someone is encouraging viewers to skip ahead, it cuts into both of those numbers, theoretically reducing the chances of that video being successful. That feels like a personal attack on the creator, which is a big part of why the responses from creators are so emotional. Being a video creator is hard work. Viewers typically have no idea how much actual work goes into videos and how little reward there can be in it. By the time you see this, I've probably put 10 hours of work into this video. If I'm lucky, I might generate three or four dollars in ad revenue. So I'm literally making like 35 cents an hour. If someone in the comments is like, video starts at killing my chances to earn my crappy 35 cents an hour, that stuff hurts. I get it. I feel it too. But that comment is also gold. That comment means money to me because if I can take that feedback, tighten up my intros, try to make my videos less skip worthy, my videos will perform better and I can move up to making 40 or 50 or 60 cents an hour. Wait, why am I doing this? As creators, we think it's about them skipping the intro versus watching the intro, but that's never really what it's about. In reality, it's about them skipping the intro versus disliking the video, immediately leaving, and never coming back because they associate your face with wasting their time. Next time they see your thumbnail, they skip it, which kills your click-through rate and makes your next videos tank. So the next time you see a timestamp hero telling your audience when the video actually starts, just take the L, let it happen, and try not to give them a reason to do it next time.